I have a new recipe for potato for oh, you. Oh, It has dehydrated onion, natural flavoring, dextrose, disodium, dehydrogen, pyrophosphate, whatever it is, I can't even read it. Gosh, Jack, I don't want any of that stuff in my potato. I just want a lot of butter and a bit of salt and pepper. I agree with you on that one. Well, we're going to have some wonderful recipes for potatoes today. Happy cooking. Bon appétit. I think one of the best basic of all potato is baked potato. I think it is. Yeah. Simple. One thing that I don't like is when they bake it with aluminum foil around. It gets oh. all steam inside, you know? Are those Idaho's or Russell's? Yeah, those are Idaho potato, baking okay. potato, you Well, do you, you also like the Yukon Gold? I love the Yukon Gold, don't you? This, I think that's the Yukon Gold. Yeah, those are Yukon Gold. Yeah, they're, I think they're, they're a great really, all-purpose uh, one. See it, you know, yes, you get the I color. Yes, I think they're delicious. Yeah, beautiful, yes. Now, how about these little... Oh, those are the fingerling potato. This is really good to saute. They are even more yellow. Oh, yes, you know? yes. Those are really good. Mm -hmm. That's the red potato. Those are blue potato. I don't like them. You know, and this mm -hmm. is like purple inside. It's new style, I mean. It's... If you want to make people scream, you use them. <laughs> yes. But you know, one of the best potato to have, actually, is just a plant baked potato like this. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I cut them this way to yep. press it open, right? Mm -hmm. Shall we put a bit of cream on top of this? You put a little salt. You have a little so salt, a pepper. Salt. Yeah, you have salt there. Just put a little a salt. A bit of pepper there. if you want. I'll give you some chives. And sour cream. That's just sour cream. All kind of fresh, you know, but uh, I love sour cream, actually. Or butter. My wife put both. She liked both butter I'm, and sour I'm cream. for her. That's, that's like, oh, wonderful. That's a, yeah. But this is such a simple and delightful dish, you know, with a steak or with and anything. And it looks appetizing. It is. Looks uh, good. Everybody's favorite. I have more potato here that's all, all baked. And I think we're going to do a kind of ash brown potato. And we have to peel them unless you like it with the skin. I hate them with the I skin. I knew you would say that, I you know. I just hate it. <laughs> potato salad with the skin in it. Yes. It's no, kind of bitter. In the oven like that, I personally like the skin, only when it's in the oven like this. Oh, yeah. But not for uh, what we are doing, mm -hmm. you know, sauteing them. You want to peel one I'll for peel me? I'll peel some. But right. You have all the little knives. Oh, here, here. Oh, I have one. Oh, you have here, here, here. I didn't steal your knife. Those are just out of the oven, and uh, they are very hot. But, you know, you could do that recipe by just boiling the potato. Mm -hmm. But when you put them in the oven like this, they really have a wonderful taste, you know? Well, the hash browns you can make with any kind of cooked uh -huh. potato, can't you? Yes, with any. I think they're delicious. I just love them. And for this, you know, we need a couple of pounds of potato for that recipe. Hash brown, where we call that pomme macaire in French. It's slightly... Different. Just to make it sound fancy. Yes, absolutely, see? Now, I'm going to put a little bit of canola oil in there, of like a good two tablespoon at least. You use canola oil for when you say vegetable that oil, you use that. Well, I don't like to use a generic vegetable oil that I don't know what it is. I like to use an oil that I know what it is. One way of cutting it, you know, I like to use a, a can open on both hands, you know. I learned that when I was at Howard Johnson. Oh, you did? I was working I at Howard Johnson. I was you were there. Yes, working at Howard Johnson a long time. Well, I know Jim here. Beard has a recipe for hash browns, and he always cuts them with that. With this, yeah, yes. So, what we'll do now, 
we put them to cook. And we want to do like a gâteau with it. Mm -hmm. you know? So what we want to do first is to put some nutmeg you know, that I have here. And I have your wonderful nutmeg machine there. Yes. You know, this is great. It slides the nutmeg. But you don't want to have so much nutmeg that people say, oh, no, that's true. nutmeg, do you? That's true, you know, but the nutmeg people should know that you should use a real nutmeg like this, and you know, rather than the powder. Or even use a knife, you want know, to scrape it like this, you know? No, we're just going to make an awful lot of nutmeg, do we? No, think? that's be fine. That's no, going to be great. I hope so. Did you put salt pepper in it? No, no? I didn't put anything in. OK, so I'm going to put a little bit of paper, some salt. And what you want to do, of course, is to mix it. So this we want to cook for five minutes, nice brown, and then in the oven mm -hmm. until it's brown so that we can unmold it like a cake. Now, and then another method of doing this, you have your potatoes and you cut them any way you want. Then and you then you saute them, them you have to do like brown. a number. Yeah, right. And then you keep mashing them down, uh -huh. Uh -huh. but they stay in pieces, uh -huh. which is nice. I like that one. I like the other one. <laughs> sure. Now I'm going to give you, are we, we going to do mashed potato? We are. Yes, OK. All right. So we have potato boiling here. We have a lot of potato. So I'll put it this way to drain. Here is your mixer bowl. Yep. How about as much as this? Well, if we had more room, I would put this in a pan first and then put it Oh, uh, on the top heat. of the stove to dry and it out. Dry it all out. Yes, to take the moisture out of yeah. it. Right? So I'll pretend I've done enough there okay. to dry it all out. Then in it goes to the mixer. Sure, this so is you... going to be nice, plain mashed potatoes. OK. I'm not going to put a lot of stuff in. Milk? Hot milk. It has to be hot milk and hot cold milk. butter. You could put some cream in. You can put in as much butter as you want. Well, I don't think that's probably enough. Let's okay. see how it is. OK. Do you want to take a little taste there? Is it good? Oh, it's good. good. Mm, good. Let's take this off. I put them on. You want them. And then, I think this is here? terribly necessary when you're all by yourself cooking Thanksgiving dinner. You can do it ahead. I just put it in a pan of lightly simmering water and put the cover on, but always leave a little air space. I did these one time, I guess it was over at the Boston University Cooking School, and I didn't have the spoon in it, and people kept covering it airtight. But it does pick up a, an off taste if it's... You think so? I think so, if it's... I never heard that one. Well, try it. OK. And you'll see. But always leave that little space of air, and you'll never have any trouble. I think that now the potato, you see the way they slide? Yeah. I know they are nicely brown flip, around, so now we want to put them now. in the oven. You're not going to flip it over. No, no. no. We put them in the All oven, right. they have to brown on top a little bit. Well, I think it must be ready now. My ash brown mashed potato. Yeah, it looks good. Brown a little bit on top. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, what we are going to do is to unmold it. You know, I love those lids that you have here. Oh, this I got the these old... way back in 48 at the flea market in Naked Paris. No kidding. They're wonderful. You know, they fit any pan. And mm -hmm. in addition, they are great as a spatula to unmold something Look like this. Look at that. Look at that, you that's, see? That's beautiful, isn't it? And then to slide it underneath yeah. here. That's great. But then, when I was at the Plaza Athene in Paris, we used to make it even more luscious by putting cream on top of it. Is that so Sour you can cream. you can serve it one or the other. Well, we used to use the uh, creme yeah, fraiche, but there I'm using sour cream. Yes, I like sour cream. Well, actually. you could mix sour cream and whipped cream. Yeah, you? that would be close to uh, close to in France. And some uh, some Gruyere here, or uh, 
for the type of cheese like this. Now this would be good if you happen to be a vegetarian. You could make your whole meal out of this. Well, yes, it depends whether some vegetarian may not even want milk, you know? Well, we don't have not invited them. Okay, so I'm gonna put that under the broiler okay. for a couple of minutes. And uh, Well, while you're doing it, it, I'll brown. finish my garlic mashed potatoes. Okay. So here's the garlic that's... So you strain your garlic there. When you're it's mashing been it up. Simmered now. Oh, I see. You cook the garlic in the cream. In the cream. And you mash it up. Well, that is completely mashed. And the puree oh, of garlic. Add it to the cream. You put it back into the cream. And that cream is reduced nicely. Gosh. Now we yes. should put that in our mashed potatoes. See, that's held very nicely. All of it? We I think so. That much, oh, yes. yes, that's not so much. Yes, it's sure going to be good. Oh, it smells mm. good. See, that's nice. kept perfectly. Oh, look lovely, don't they? Nice plate of mashed potato. So, I have to make it smooth. Oh, that's lovely. And then maybe we put some chives here. Or stick them on the top. Oh. Now that's lovely. <laughs> that's nice. There you are, super mash. Well, let me check my potato in the oven. Yeah, they are about just right. Well, that looks Look pretty nice. That. Yes. So oh. I'm going to bring this around here. That As looks you know, very nice. better not touch that. This is really hot. Yeah. But you can eat the pomme back here just by itself. But you know, it is nice if you really have, want to do a bit of a fancy party and serve it in a, in a kind of wedge like this, you know. That's pretty big. Yes. Yes, oh, I love it. So there is some chive there. We we'll leave the chive in it. It should look good. And so you have a piece of uh, potato like this, you know. Then you could put some poached eggs around it. Or That's some right. bacon. That looks great, doesn't it? It does. Why don't you taste it now? I will taste on it. It looks delicious. Mm, I like that very much. And that could certainly be the main course for a meal. Good, nice Absolutely. recipe. Thank you. We're going to do two famous gratin dishes, a scalloped potato dishes. One is with milk, and the other was with onion and stock. That's right, chicken stock. So... I'm going to do the milky one. OK, and I'll do the other. All right. Put the machine on, and we turn it. We can also do it by hand, but it does munch faster with that type of thing. So I have some of the potato, and it's important here not to wash the potato after. You want the potato start so the yeah. potatoes will stick together. Exactly, to do the creaminess of the gratin, you know? Okay, so I have two pounds of potato here. Got some chopped garlic, and I'm gonna mash it with a bit of salt. So you crush that. That's really a puree. And we ought to have a little okay. salt and pepper. Do you want to So you want salt and pepper on top of this? White pepper again. You want white? Mm -hmm. I like black pepper in mine, but I have black pepper in mine and salt. And this is just plain milk. So you want... And I just want milk up to the top. Okay. Is that going to give us enough? I think you need a little more. Well, then in that case, we'll have to add a little cream. Yeah, that time a little cream, right? But you yeah. don't need the cream. You can do it if you go to a three-star restaurant. You can have it done entirely with cream. And that at was home, the garlic that's gone in there. Yes, at home you you can have it only done with uh, well, I with think milk if you do it entirely with cream, you have to cook it very, very, very slowly, yeah. don't you think? I, I think it ended up being too rich anyway. But three quarter milk, a quarter cream, you know, I think it's a good proportion. So this is ready to, to be brought to a boil, right? Mm-hmm. Top of the stove. And I have the other gratin here. Let's put it maybe together. So this one I have salt pepper, mm -hmm. a few sprigs of thyme. A lot of uh, sliced garlic here, we put, and a lot of onion. This is the pomme boulangère, we call, in the style of the baker's wife. Any of those are great with a leg of lamb, huh? Don't you think so? Wonderful, yes. Yeah. And again, the same idea here, but uh, this time we use chicken stock, yeah, which... So I'll, I'll bring this All right. to the boil on my thing, which is slower than yours. Just enough. I'll bring mine here, too. 
So that's gonna take a couple of minutes to come to a boil, and then we put it in the oven. Exactly. I think they're ready for the oven now. Well, it's boiling let's, nicely. Now let's show that this, this milk is thickened up because of the starch in yes, the potato. Yes, that's the beautiful texture that you are supposed to have, yes. And I think at this point also you taste it, that you've got enough salt in there. It tastes good. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's got to be careful also because it can scorch in the bottom, you know, so scrape it a little bit. And then I like, see if it's just milk, I like to put a little bit of, just a little bit of butter on the top. Because uh -huh. that'll help it brown and give it the little richness it deserves. So the idea is to bring it to a boil first on the stove to get the viscosity because of the starch, and then it goes into the oven like a good hour in about four. Oh. This one gets slightly thicker also. I mean, the chicken stuck, as you can see, is slightly oily. Mm -hmm. And that's the same idea here. We put it in and you, you the have no dish. fat of any type in your... Well, the chicken stock, you know, if you have, but usually... Matter. So those are ready to go in. into the oven. Oh, it's bubbling nicely, and I think it's done. And I think it's important to say that it should be on cookie sheet in case it's spilled over. This is such, you know, like the family Sunday dinner, you know, with uh, a big leg of lamb roasting and a gratin like this, you know? Mm -hmm. That's you think perfect, so? isn't it? I put a plate here, another plate here. I like to put on mine, I like to put a little bit of parsley on top. Shall we serve a portion of this? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, and this one is here. Potato. So it's quite different in taste, of course, because and in smell, the chicken too. stuck. That's, well, that looks lovely. That's it. A little bit of parsley on this one. Sprig of thyme here. The bay leaf. Don't eat the bay leaf. Mm -hmm. Just for flavor. I will test you first. I think this is an awfully nice dish because it looks, it's kind mm. of dressy looking. Absolutely delicious. Mm -hmm. Now, a me, little bit of garlic is mm. nice. I like that, you know, when cold, cold the day after, not cold, but room temperature. Mm -hmm. When we were a kid, my mother would do it with a big salad, a lot of garlic in it, and that's a whole meal. Very so, nice. Yeah. Well, this is quite different. I think I like this very much, too. Mm. With the leg of lamb, that mm. could be... Now it has lots of flavor to it. Yeah, very delicious. Two delicious dishes. Fried oh. potato. Pom fried. Pom sheep. Potato yes. chip, we call. And pom go fried. Okay. Straw potato, all that are fried. And we're doing a very special one today. We're doing... Yes, the pomme souffle. Now I'm slicing the potato for the, the pomme souffle here and cutting them about, well, above one eighth of an inch, you know? Yeah, about like this. And they should think? be absolutely even. Yeah, they should be even. So we use here, of course, frying potato, your Idaho potato, you know? So those, you wash them after, those you have to wash them after, and you have two fryer here. I have a fryer which is about 300 degrees and one which is about 350 degrees. You cook them, see it's about 300 degrees now. I'm gonna put them in there. This is to soften them up, isn't it? It's to soften them up. Okay, the idea there is that you're going to shake your pan like this, and your potato, what you wanna do, the potato cook on each side and form a shield on each side of the potato. And it's like a transfer of heat, like when you are in the in your bathtub with the hot water. You know, if you don't move, it's not as hot as if you move. Yeah. So the same idea here. You rub and add the potato rub. It forms a crust on each side. But the center of the potato become cooked and mushy, like a mashed mm -hmm. potato. And that develops steam. And the steam wants to escape. It starts pushing. And the side, if they are just fry it up, then they will blow up into a pomme souffle. Mm -hmm. So those should be cooked, basically, but you don't want them to be hard and brown outside because they would not mm -hmm. go up. Now, if you see the potato, usually take about three, three and a half, four minutes, they will start forming blister on top of it. But I think if you're, 
if you're not used to frying anything, I think you should use a fairly deep pot so that you're not going to splatter yourself with burning oil. Yes. And don't I mean, take it lightly because you can get an awful burn if you aren't careful. When they start blistering a little bit like that, you think they are ready, so they go directly into our oil. Uh -huh. Now, this is the time, you see. We'll see how they work. For example, here, that's set now. You let them rest for five, six seconds. As soon as this touch there, they will inflate or not inflate, one or the other. So let's see. see? Wow, well, they're doing it, are they? Yes. I have two which work out of four. That's not too good. My apprenticeship chef would have thrown me out. But I know that this one works, so you put it on the side. Oh. When you know they work, and the other one, you eat them. You give them in the kitchen. It means that, you know, even if it takes you the whole afternoon to do pomme souffle, all the ones which work, you put them on the side. Yeah. So that by the time you have your guests, you know they all work. They have been yeah. pre-tried, you know? See, as soon as they oh, touch, you see good. this one? one so as soon as they touch, they should blow up, you know? Most? This one works also a little bit. And well, that's the other one that did. This is the bad one. You put them underneath, you put the nice one on top. Oh, yes. So I did those downstairs. That and was you see, smart of you. So what happened in a restaurant is that you have all of those ready. And when you have an order, and it's very simple, you take eight or ten of those, you know? How many per person? Usually seven, eight, you know? And then, you know, they've all been pre-tried. Oh, and then they are really coming up. You know, so they're all going to re reinflate like this. And at that point, of course, I take them out. You want to cook them long enough so that they brown. Ooh, they brown very fast. So they stay inflated, well, you know, like this. It's really magical, isn't it? Yes. I mean, it's yeah, just... That's nice. Good thing. But what a good idea to be all ready so you won't have a failure. It's not that, you know. By the time, as I say, your guests come, no one knows how many you miss or not. <laughs> so. But you could still cook the ones that failed. and you The one that you failed, of course, you yeah, fry yes. them and you have, like, fried potatoes. It's perfectly yes. fine. Yes. So should I put them on top? OK. Paper towel. Oh, that was so beautiful. Then a little salt. And a tiny dash of salt on top of it. I think I wanted to show one at least to break it open. You know, to show the inside, yes. you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is no. just the two shell of the potato, mm -hmm. you know, which... Uh... Oh, good. Oh. Well, that's, my, wonderful. that's wonderful. My average was very bad. So, we do a basket... Uh... Oh, you don't have to. In napkin like this, and this is the classic way of, uh, you know, presenting your pomme souffle. With the pomme souffle, we deserve a glass of wine. I think you're right there, Jacques. It is not often. It's a bit special to do pomme souffle, but frankly, when you have a great, beautiful party, something really special, mm -hmm. it's not really expensive. You know, it's no. potato, and as I say, you don't lose anything. But you just you have, have, to, have to know Have the proper tricks. technique. You've been Thank so you. kind as to show us. Thank you very much, and happy cooking. Bon appétit, and have fun cooking together. Presentation of KQED San Francisco.